Paolo Di Canio is making things happen in Swindon. Not a sentence you would have predicted 12 months ago. Mark McAdam went along to taste the cappuccino culture in deepest Wiltshire. For Swindon Town, things couldn't be much better right now. Sixth in League Two and progressing nicely in both cup competitions. In fact, things are going so well that a local Italian has named a pizza after manager Paolo Di Canio. So I brought along four of Swindon's finest to give it a taste. Paul Caddis, you're doing a Movember. Simon Ferry, you're doing a Jedwood. Yeah, I'm doing a Movember. <laughs> but you're trying to do a Movember. Yeah, yeah. Alan Connell, you just look slick as normal. Normal, normal look. <laughs> and Rafa, you're the Italian. Um, that's me, yeah. And Alan, you told me to say the turning point for Swindon's season <laughs> was when you came on and got those two goals against Rotherham. Um, yeah, no, it was uh, a game that was live on Sky and uh, we, were, we were losing. <laughs> and uh, we come we come back from from behind and, and won the game and we've been going pretty well since then. Rafa, yeah. I got told that the gaffer signed you first as a translator, and second as a footballer. <laughs> yeah, I'm still an official translator. I still, I'm, I'm not here for football, but I enjoyed translating as well and I helped Simon as well because the gaffer doesn't understand him when he speaks. He doesn't right. even know any of that. See when the gaffer asks him to translate, he's like, I don't know. No, but he, <laughs> he translates. That's true actually. <laughs> so when Paolo De Canio is there at half time yeah. and he's doing his team talk and he starts talking in Italian to his backroom staff, does everyone look at you? It happened a few times. Uh, when I was on the bench and you know, he's always, you know, shouting in Italian to his, his assistant, they always turn to me and say, but sometimes I can't translate because he's hammering people. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't translate for him. I know everyone's giving Rafa a bit of stick, but I've been told your name's Paul Di Canio. <laughs> yeah, probably has to be fair, eh? <laughs> You can see where the boys are coming from. Yeah, he praises me quite a lot, but... Rightly so, because I'm absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Should we order some food? Yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. starving. What's the best now? They actually do. He definitely he's, uh, they definitely paying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a joke. No, I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> top man at the club, and he's mind about the, what, <laughs> the food. Are they, the, definitely the Are they definitely paying? Are they definitely paying? Yeah, yeah. 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 What's the gaffer like in training? Does he join in? He has done he a lot of times, yeah. Yeah, very, yeah. yeah, very good. He could easily still play for us, can he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? He's oh, still he's that good? To be fair, we need a striker, we're well. struggling for strikers. <laughs> 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 See, when we're doing like, drills and that, he, he'll like, do the demonstration and do it, and then like, after that, yours are like, terrible, and he must think, what? The, how can you not do this? Like, this is perfect, do you know what I mean? Then you're like, kicking balls off each other. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the pizza de Canio. Yeah. Look at this. Paolo's pizza. These chips are nothing to do with me. This is, this is Paul Caddis. This is Paul Caddis that's ordered these chips. Not just one portion of chips, two. Yeah, why not? <laughs> AFC Wimbledon on Saturday. Obviously a team that last season were two divisions apart from yourselves. We played them on Tuesday in uh, Johnson's Paint and uh, really had a play against. They gave us a really good game, obviously, about the penalties and we got through, but... Um, I think going away, especially to any team in this league, is going to be a hard game. Now, before we go, I've got a few quick-fire questions that I'm going to ask you. And it's got to be about the four lads that are on the table now. Who's the best trainer? Paul Cardis. Yeah, Tim Card. Paul Cardis, best he's not trainer? He's just busy. <laughs> busy trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the worst trainer? You can't be. Rafa, I'd say. Oh, no, you wouldn't say that. He's, he just dives all over the place. <laughs> right. Yeah, he does. He does dive a lot. Dives all the time. Right. Who's the joker? So, so, no. definitely. You're the joker. Yeah, What's yeah. the best joke you've ever played? Getting this far in football. <laughs> <laughs> Who out of your four has got the best dance moves? Al Connell, smooth. He is snake hips, I'm telling you. <laughs> think, John, think John Travolta by broken hip. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Who spends the longest in the mirror after oh games? My oh, God. there's only one. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, Gaffer. 100%. Uh, that's to right. be fair, that fringe don't do it so well. I was going to say, you don't wake up with hair like that, do nah, you? Yeah, you're right, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the worst dressed? Don't even... Nobody even think about glancing at <laughs> in this direction. Worst dressed? Um, in, in this country, he gets away with it, but in Italy, he would get arrested without... <laughs> he knows it as well. And in, <laughs> probably in Dundee as well. Let's, I think we should do it properly. I think we need to have a little little cap walk. Head to toe, and then we'll let the viewers decide. <laughs> let, we'll let the viewers decide sure whether they think he's got good dress sense sure or bad good. dress sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Good luck. Decent. We'll ring you, I think, is the answer there, isn't it? But you can always tell a club which is doing well, because the atmosphere like that in the dressing room, if that was in the dressing room, yeah. it'd be the same, wouldn't it? They're, they're really bubbling. Very much. There looks like some real good characters there. Um, you know, but they've got a manager who's uh, who's got a lot yeah. of personality. Did you not play with him? Uh, yeah, we were together at Celtic, yeah, and he was yeah. he was fantastic. He was he was he was mad when he was at Celtic. He was he was really off the wall and crazy. He was he was good fun to be around. But on the training field, top class in, top top talent. He, he did really well for Celtic at the time. Adapted very well to Scottish football. Did you and see him as a manager? Did was he no, interested no, in that no, sort of things? No, no, absolutely not. You know, he would he would certainly argue with with Andrew and anyone, but. Um, very fiery temper, um, but but at the time, no, no, absolutely not. And uh, but it's like anything. At near the end of his career, he's, he's obviously thought, what am I going to do next? Did a little bit of um, you know pundit stuff in Italy, mm. uh, worked for the newspapers, but um, always had the feeling that he, that he wanted to come back to Britain. I think he enjoyed his time here, obviously. Um, and uh, you know he got the chance at, at Swindon, and it's going well for him at the moment. Yeah, shaky start of the season, but going mm. really well now. Latest, uh, you know, two 0 win over Port Vale, mm. emphasising that. Um, going really well since that early start. Where I suppose he was changing things around. Well, I think he's brought a lot of players in. You know, there's a lot of players that have come in. There's, there's uh, quite a lot of, of the foreign lads have come in, um, and you know, it's taking time to get the kind of right blend and mix of what he wants in the team. You know, I know he's he's brought his Italian fitness coach with him, and um, they've had long days. You know, I think it was it was um, it was documented the first 40 days, then about a day off in the first 40 days of, of him being in the job. Um, but um, you know, as I say, I think it takes a time to get a blend and a mix together, and, and he looks as if he's doing that now. Yeah, 14 points at the last 18 uh, Three, tells you that, doesn't it? Really? Um, I know uh, locally as well. They've been saying, oh, you know, West Wind are in League Two. He's powered the Canio. He'll be off. He'll be tempted away somewhere. But um, I don't get the impression that he will go too quickly. I think he'll try and carry this job through. I don't know what you think, Malky. I, you know, certainly he's got the chance. He, he, he needs to, to show that uh, over mm -hmm. a period that he's um, he's worthy of the, the chance yeah. to, to probably step up if it came. You know, I, I think I remember at the start of the season, um, the, the chairman of West Ham was asked, Paolo Di Canio, would you have him back here? And, and I think one of his responses was he would certainly be considered mm -hmm. had he only a little bit of experience. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's then what he, he, you know, he looks for. He obviously, wants to do very well for Swindon and um, and, and get them as, as high up the leagues as possible. But a promotion uh, would look good, would very it? much so, very yeah. much so. Yeah, so he's there for the duration at least. Uh, Matt Ritchie is doing very well for yeah. him. Uh, one of the players, you know, scoring goals, mm. ex-Portsmouth trainee, Dagenham and Redbridge, but um, useful player. Yeah, very much so. Got a nice left foot, and um, you know, again, he's, he's scored some goals, some some important goals for him at the moment, um, and. Uh, as I say, they're, they're a team at the moment that are on a roll. They've, they've been on 14 from 18 is a, is a great little period and some good goals he scores here. Because yeah. again, you know, League Two, it doesn't matter who you are, look at Bradford, it doesn't matter who you are, how big you are, what kind of fans you get, uh, there's no guaranteed right no, of getting out League Two. Absolutely not. This one was a cracker, top corner there, uh, 35 yards, but they're a team that look full of confidence right now. So Swindon nicely uh, positioned in Empower League Two. And going really well for them. Sixth at the moment after a poor early start of the season. They've, they've raced right up the table. South End, Crawley, Cheltenham in the top three. Well done, Cheltenham. Fantastic for Mark Yates and the boys down there. Shrewsbury, Morecambe, Swindon and Oxford make up the top seven. Down at the bottom, Plymouth Argyle sadly are on the bottom still. Barnet second from bottom, but only on goal difference behind Dagenham and Redbridge. And the fixtures in Empower League Two, AFC Wimbledon against Swindon. Wimbledon without a win in seven, Swindon unbeaten in the last nine in all competitions. Aldershot against Gillingham, Gillingham last two games in all competitions have produced 13 goals. Bradford against Rotherham, Bristol Rovers against Barnes. Barnes have the worst defensive record in the Football League, conceded 37. Cheltenham against Port Vale, Cheltenham have won eight of their last ten games. Crawley against Oxford, Crawley unbeaten in their last ten. Dagenham and Redbridge against South End. Dagenham and Redbridge have uh, lost a club record six successive league games now. Southend are unbeaten in their last ten. Hereford against Burton, Macclesfield playing Accrington. Morecambe up against Crewe, Morecambe unbeaten in their last five league games. Crewe have lost their last four in all competitions. Managerless Northampton against Shrewsbury. Northampton have picked up just one point from their last six games. Shrewsbury are unbeaten in their last five games in all competitions. And Torquay against Plymouth. Torquay have won their last three league games without conceding.